So today we will have a look at a few ways we can create ratcheting in the style of Tangerine Dream in the modular environment. Let's first of all have a look at what is ratcheting anyway. So here I have a simple sequence. Right, and our ratcheting will add triggers or pulses per step, but without changing the pitch. So the voice itself will be triggered multiple times, while the sequencer is, will still run in the same rate. Right, so if now I add ratcheting, Right, you can hear per step there are more pulses that are triggering the voice. Right, so let's really have a look at how to do this in the modular environment. So probably the easiest way we can add ratcheting is by using a voltage controlled clock multiplier. So it will multiply the clock signal or the gates or the triggers and we can control it with voltage. In this case, I have R gate from Bog Audio, which works great. I'm sure there are other modules that work also um, quite well for this. In hardware, if you want to try this in hardware, you can use something like the 4MS quad clock distributor that has also um, CV, right? You can multiply and divide also with control voltage. And there is also one from Dopfer, for example, the voltage controlled clock multiplier and ratcheting controller, which is exactly what we want. So there are also some possibilities in hardware for this technique. So here basically I have a simple sequence, it will sound like this. Right, oscillator going through a low pass filter, envelope and a VCA. For now delay, the delay and reverb are all the way down. Right, and now instead of using the triggers directly from the sequencer, I'm going to send them first through the clock multiplier. Right, um, I will um, set also the, um, use also the reset just in case. Right, and now I can multiply this clock or this trigger. Right, and again I can do this with control voltage. So in this case, I'm going to use the second row from the sequencer. This will go to the multiplier CV input. Now in the case of the Bog Audio modules, the controller itself will become the attenuator. So in this case, I'm going to turn this all the way up, the clock uh, multiplication. Right, and now I can add ratcheting with the second row. Right. To individual steps. Just like this again with some delay and reverb. Right, just like this. I have here another example. Um, it is a bit more fun maybe if you have in hardware or in VCV you can also experiment with this if you have another sequencer so the main sequence will run the pitch sequence and another sequencer will control the ratcheting we will control the clock multiplier right so you get two different rhythms in this case the sex we has eight steps and I'm using here a 16 step sequencer so let's see what happens here right this is the sequence without ratcheting and now let's start adding some let me just reset everything just in case right now again here we have 16 steps and here we have 8 but what happens when I will change this sequencer to have less steps let's say 12 So now they will meet each other at different places and different notes will have ratchets on them. Okay, the second way I want to show you, which is a bit more advanced, is by using a sequential switch switching between different clock multiplications. So what I have here, again, a simple voice. In this case, I'm using kick all, 
from Befaco. Um, again, the delay and the reverb for now are all the way down. And I'm using the ADDR sequencer and expander to have a 16 step um, sequence that will sound like this. Right, again, something very simple. And now in, in, uh, um, with this clock, with the clocked form in POM2, I can have different clock multiplications. You can see I've multiplied by four, multiplied by six. Let me stop with this for a second. I want to show you in hardware. Um, if you want to try this in hardware, there is Pamela's new workout for sure. Um, you can set it to have different multiplications. There is also Tempi for make noise which is great for ratcheting and anyway because you can save different states but it also has different channels that you can set with multiplications right so also in hardware you have um, um, some possibilities for this technique right so what i will do again let me run this sequence so what i will do i will set or i will send the normal clock to the first input let's say and then the second input of the switch will be multiplied by four the third one again the normal clock and the last input will be multiplied by six and now again this is a sequential switch so i can switch between these multiplications sequentially one after the other if i use for example the normal clock right and i use this the result from the sequential switch to trigger my voice right So now I switch between the multiplications. Now I can also use instead of the normal clock, I can use a divided clock, for example. So I divide it by two, let's say. Right, and create a ratcheting like this again with some delay and reverb. you can create quite, uh, quite interesting results and again the fun starts when you use a different sequencer to clock the sequential switch right so here again I have uh, multiplications going to the switch but now instead of using the clock the normal clock right to drive the switch I have here a different trigger sequencer this one is from count modular a simple sequencer but it will clock it will switch between the multiplications right so it will sound like this So like this you can also create a quite interesting results and I just want to show you if you don't have um, if you don't have a clock in your system or you just want to experiment with this technique differently also in VCV rack you can also use a trigger sequencer as your clock multiplier right so here the main clock is coming from an LFO with quite a quick rate it's triggering a trigger sequencer. You will need a trigger sequencer that has multiple rows, right? And then the first row will be my main clock. This will have just the first switch on. So basically it's divided by eight, right? Because I have here eight steps, right? So this is divided by eight clock from the LFO, right? This will be my normal clock that will clock. I can also um, put this on, right? So this will be the main clock that will trigger the voice. And again, I can change the rate with the LFO. Right, and then I have one multiplication with two switches on, with two steps on, that will sound like this. Another multiplication with four switches on. Right, and another multiplication with three three steps and one switch on so we have triplets right so if now I go and I switch between them right and in this case I have a bigger switch it has eight inputs now those are a lot of uh, a lot of cables also for hardware but maybe you want to experiment with this right in hardware there are also 
interesting switches like the Boss Bow 2 from ALM with eight inputs or outputs and also different modes that you can use to switch between them. And there is of course also one from Dopfer that you can experiment with and other switches that you can use. Right, but this is how you can use a trigger sequencer as your clock multiplier. Again, interesting also to experiment with in VCV rack. And another, by the way, I have here is the Max Slicer from Befaco that has ratcheting built in. Right, so this is how it will sound like. This is a sequence I have with Max Slicer. Right, and it has the gate modes. Right, let me just take down the effects a bit. Right, that I can modulate also with external CV. Um, I have also a video on Patreon all about the Max Slicer and Max, um, Max Expander. With all sorts of different ways you can use this lovely, lovely sequencer and switch. Right, so I can use an external signal, something from the ADDR sequencer, for example. In hardware, you can use something like the voltage block, right, to add ratcheting. So the last example I want to show you is how you can use oscillator sync either with LFOs or with VCOs, we will have a look at both ways, to create ratcheting and even a bit of swing. Now this technique, the technique with the uh, sequential switch, and there is even another technique with the burst generator that I'm not showing here, all of them are available in my uh, patching techniques and ideas document with many, 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 many more techniques and ideas, there are over a hundred there, everything is with um, um, patch examples in VCV, I can patch diagrams and whatnot. Um, links in the description if you are interested. Um, but now let me show you how this works. Right, so here again I have a simple sequence, the SEC3 sequencing. Uh, in this case, it's a sine wave going through a wave folder, chopping kinky from Befaco. Um, again, delay and reverb for now are all the way down, so it will sound like this. Right now, the clock that I'm using here, you can see this is an LFO. This will be the clock rate, right? I can change the clock rate basically, and this works great also in hardware. Right, so this will be the main um, frequency or rate or BPM, if you will, of your patch. Right, and here I have another LFO that will control the ratcheting, so what I will do, Instead of using the trigger from the SEC 3, again, I will use the um, trigger or the square output from the ratcheting LFO. And now I will sync it through the reset input with the main LFO. So again, I can control the clock rate. Right, I can control the clock rate with the clock rate LFO and add ratcheting with the ratcheting LFO and even some swing as you just heard. Right, let me zoom in a bit just so you can see this. Again, I have here the clock rate on the left and on the right the ratcheting LFO. Again, what I did, I synced the second LFO here with the, with the first one through the reset input and this will create the ratcheting and of course this LFO is voltage controlled so I can use the second row for example to control its rate and create by this ratcheting. Right? Just like this I can add a bit of delay with tap dancer here in the river. Right, which is quite a cool technique. It's a bit more experimental than the other ones, but it can uh, yield really interesting results. 
Here I want to show you this with two VCOs and not with two LFOs. So you will need, of course, um, um, a VCO that has a sync input. Right, so again, here I have one VCO will be the clock and another VCO will be the ratcheting. Now, some uh, oscillators can go into LFO rates, for example, the TSL, CSL, Neoni from Instruo works amazing also in hardware. There are other oscillators that can go to LFO rates. Um, but if not, some oscillators, like for example, even the STO for make noise, um, you can offset their pitch to go even lower, right? So if I run this, you can hear this is the lowest this oscillator will go. This is uh, 11 Hertz. Right, but I can offset this with offset. So if I send, for example, offset signal from the dual attenuverter from the FACO, I can take the, the rate even lower. Right, so I have something better for a clock. Right, something like this. And this will go to both oscillators, so both of them will be uh, will run a bit slower. Right, and again, instead of using the output from the SEC3 to trigger my voice, I'm going to use the ratcheting oscillator and sync it via the sync input in this case with the first oscillator. Right, and now again I can control the rate and I can add ratcheting and even some swing. And again, control this with voltage via the FM input. Right, something like this. I will add some delay and reverb. Right, so again, in hardware, you have various oscillators from Instruo that uh, have also LFO modes, right? LFO. LFO, LFO with Neoni, CSL and TSL, there are other oscillators that can do this. If you want to try this with LFOs, you can try something like the LFOs from Batumi. It has also reset and sync, and you have four LFOs in one module, which is quite interesting. So again, all of these techniques are in the patching techniques and ideas document. All of them will work also really nicely in hardware. I hope you enjoy this video. Cheers.